Game day and every day, score a jewelry touchdown with Kendra Scott. Shop fashion and find jewelry fit for another winning season at your local store or at KendraScott.com. Shine bright, do good with Kendra Scott. Baldy, you didn't have to keep the jacket on for the podcast, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like it. Hey, hey, you look great, man. I'm trying, I'm trying to blend in with all the green around here. How much do you enjoy coming to One Jets Drive when Bart Scott is in <laughs> town? Because... <laughs> You know, we're taping Jets game day. Unfortunately, we don't have him on the podcast today because yeah. he had to run off. But you guys, when we're not on camera, oh, are diving deep. Well, it is because we're both football heads. Yeah. So we love talking about the game, the strategy of the game. Um, the, you know, is even though Bart played, you know, it seems like a generation ago and me uh, <laughs> much longer than that, the game doesn't really change that much. The, you know, because how you defend certain things – is still in play, how you attack certain things is still in play. So it's just good to bounce ideas off his head as a linebacker because I'm, I'm studying all these games every week, and I see certain things, and, you know, he can give me his perspective, so it's good. People got on me last week because we actually taped a podcast with Kirk Herbstreet before the Jets-Patriots game, and a lot of people consumed the podcast after the Jets-Patriots yeah. game. Your thoughts here? As we look ahead, Jets, Broncos, and what you've seen from the Jets globally, big picture mm -hmm. during their two and one start. Well, I mean, they've gotten much better in the trenches on both sides of the ball in their two wins against Tennessee and against New England. I mean, the first Monday night game against San Francisco, it looked very raw. They couldn't stay on the field. They weren't very good on third down. You know, they just didn't have enough plays. And what we've seen is because the offensive line is starting to gel, it's playing better together. What we're seeing from the defensive front these last two weeks, we're seeing pressure on the quarterback. We're seeing much better performance against the run and some good runners. I mean, New England came in running the ball really well with Ramondre Stevenson and Antonio Gibson, and they came out not running it real well. So I, I feel like the trenches where the Jets have put a lot of resources on both sides of the ball is starting to play a lot better. And then, I mean, you, you can't not look at what Aaron Rodgers is doing. I thought his movement and what he did against the Patriots to escape, extend, keep his eyes down the field was vintage Aaron Rodgers. And I think everybody um, has talked about it, 40-year-old coming back from Achilles, can you still move? Can you still get out of harm's way? And he was able to do that, especially against the Patriots. Yeah, we broke it down, and if you're going to be uh... – you know, tuning into a couple of pregame shows, tune into Jets Game Day on CBS here locally or New York Jets.com or YouTube. The Jets, third down conversion rate, mm. number one in the National Football League. And one of the plays that you looked at was Vintage Rogers mm. escaping yep. pressure, buying some more time, keeping his eyes down the field and find, finding Tyler Conklin. Yeah, I mean, Tyler Conklin had a big game and uh, he was the leading receiver against the Patriots. And a lot of those plays, I mean, some of them were scripted, but some of them were just extensions where, you know, who's going to get in the quarterback's view? Who's going who's gonna to find the quarterback? Who's going to pop open? You know, you're going to have scramble drills. When he gets outside the pocket, he's not looking to run. He's looking to throw. And so uh, Tyler was a benefactor of that on, on one or two plays. But really, anybody can be. And so I think the longer they stay on the field, converting third downs is a big part of it, EA. Um, the more success you can have, with Aaron's ability to throw on the move. He connected with eight different receivers against the Patriots. The Jets finally got that two-score lead. Mm -hmm. um, they look like a different ball team defensively when they actually have an opportunity to fire off and not really worry about the run because from the get-go of that game, Jets had command. Well, I mean, look, I've, I think we all want to see what the Jets' defense can play like with the lead especially in the second half like they got against the Patriots, you know, where they, you know, you can make a team one-dimensional and you can get after the quarterback. I thought that Jeff Albrecht called a great game, really mixed in a bunch of blitzes in that game, more than we're used to seeing, which I think is, is creative and I think it's necessary. I think if teams just know that you're rushing four and you, you may feel really good about your four, but if teams know that, there's just a way to, pr to protect. Yep. If you always know where they're going to they, – you might run your twist stunts and things that the Jets like to do, but if you know it's going to be four, you can kind of prepare for that. When you don't know and you give them a lot of looks where you're mugging the line of scrimmage and you're either coming or not coming, you leave, you, you leave offenses indecisive. I thought they, they, they mixed that in real well. Um, 
But look, when you convert on third downs to, at the rate that they are right now, that's hard on any defense because you predicate your defenses by getting off the field on third down. And when you keep having to stay on the field, it, it wears you down defensively. It wears you down mentally and physically. Uh, the Jets have been so good in situational football because we talk about third down offensively leading the National Football League 50. 50- seven percent conversion rate and I think it was like 67 percent against the Patriots but they're one of two teams I think in the league right now that are top five in the red zone offensively and defensively well it's an important stat and it's an important stat for a reason because that decides either touchdowns or field goal attempts and so when you're scoring touchdowns you're just keeping the foot on the gas um and if you're stopping teams from getting down there like they did against Tennessee early in that game I mean that changed the whole game that fumble from Will Levis, and it was pressured by Will McDonald. But, you know, they're going in p- potentially to go up 14 nothing in that game. And they're probably thinking the same thing, uh, getting the Jets down. So when you can get turnovers in the red zone, when you can keep them out of the end zone and force field goal attempts, um, that, that's just, it's, it's just a big, big difference on the scoreboard. And from a standpoint of mentally, you feel a lot better, like you won – You might have given up yards. You might have given up first downs, but you kept out of the end zone. You come off the field, you feel pretty good about stopping them from scoring. Long season, we know, 17 games. Right now, the Jets 2-1. and With Denver coming to town, they just got their first victory of the season. Awfully impressive against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're 1-2, and but when you look ahead, the Jets can't, but we can. We can say, okay, after Denver is a trip to London, you're going to face the Minnesota Vikings who are undefeated. Then a Monday night home game against the Buffalo Bills. They're undefeated. Then a trip to Pittsburgh on a short week Sunday night. They're undefeated as well. So this fourth game, 1-17, of but it's a big one. No, it's big because at, at some point, if you want to be a playoff team, if you want to compete for a division title, you have to stack wins. Yep. And it doesn't matter really when it happens. If it can happen early, that's great. If you can go 3-1 and one in each month, you know, and get to 12 and 5 or 13 and 4, that's great. Yep. But, you know, you when you get a chance to get a 10 day rest, okay, off to a brutal start where you're playing Monday night, Sunday, Thursday, and you're playing all those you know, three games in a compressed period of time, and you get a chance to rest, recover, um, and then get focused for a home game. You know, the first one o'clock home game of the season, the fans are going to be ready, Jet Life Stadium is going to be rocking. You get a team that, honestly, the roster isn't as good as the Jets. Mm. They should take care of business. But you have to take care of business. And so you got to, they need to put this team away. They, you, what you want to do is you want to feel good about the win. You want, to, you want to go in that locker room to get your third straight, and you want to feel good about your team, about the win, and about the way that you played. It's interestingly, offensively, when we take a look, is people say, well, Garrett, uh, Garrett Wilson's numbers aren't extraordinary right now, but it – the defenses, as Aaron Rodgers will tell you, their game plan is to take him away. That's opening up other avenues for guys. And I, I just think there also are ebbs and flows with the year because we were talking about before last week, where's Tyler Conklin's production? And then all of a sudden he comes up with the five, six receptions for a career-high 93 yards. Mike Williams is starting to get more involved in the offense. With Rodgers, you have an opportunity for different guys to flash up, flash and step up every week. Well, I mean, I, I don't think I, – I th- Garrett is going to be just fine. At the end of the year, he's going to get his numbers. But you you got to play it all the way out. There's going to be games where he's just going to be a dominant player. Yeah. Okay? And he's just going to win his matchups. And Aaron's going to feel it. And he's, gonna, he's just going to keep feeding them. That's going to happen. And you might get 10 catches in a game. You know, the way we sometimes see C.D. Lamb or some of these other guys. It, it can happen. But right now, I think they're just trying to build a rhythm to the offense, you know, and figure out what they do well, how they do it. Because the idea is to win the game. Yep. So what do you, whatever you have to do to win the game is what you need to do. If you got to take shots down the field to win the game because you're playing from behind, you take your shots. But at the end of the year, Aaron Rodgers trusts Garrett Wilson. And that trust is going to produce um, – a lot of production. Do you anticipate Garrett Wilson seeing a lot of Sertan this week in one-on-one situations? I do. Um, now, he – you know, look, Vance Joseph is a quality defense coordinator. He's been around this league. There's times I think Garrett can travel with Garrett Wilson. Sometimes he might just play on one side opposite Riley Moss. 
Uh, Jaquan McMillan is their slot defender. Uh, they might mix it up a little bit. But, you know, I can see a guy like Pat, you know, Tyler Conklin gets hot. I mean, I can see Patrick Sertan, because of his size and his strength, going up on anybody. And if it's Mike Williams, if they're afraid of the, the deep shots to Mike Williams, I can see him taking him. He knows Mike Williams well from his days with the Chargers. Yeah. So he's very familiar with what a, a, a real X receiver looks like that can go deep and, you know, catch – jump ball so I think they'll I think they'll mix him up but if I was Denver right now that would be my focus I'd put Sertan uh, on Garrett Wilson and work around that what have you seen from the Jets offensive line to date and we're dealing uh, the Jets right now dealing with an injury at right tackle with Morgan Moses Olu Fashion who cut, came on late in that game he was on for that uh, touchdown, Brees Hall, the scoring run where he's tackle eligible, but he comes in for Moses as well. I, I know you loved uh, Olu coming out. We might see him having some extended action now. Well, I mean, look, I, around the league, first round picks are starting. You know, Taliese Fuaga is starting. J.C. Latham is starting. Uh, you know, F- Fatano in Pittsburgh would be starting if it wasn't for an injury right now. You know, Zach Frazier starting in Pittsburgh. He's their best offensive lineman. You know, I mean, Graham Barton is starting for Tampa at center. I mean, guys are starting. I mean, Olu was drafted to be a starter. So whether it happens in week four and he has to start, like, he should be ready. Uh, just being out there at training camp and OTAs and stuff this year, I mean, he's lucky because both Tyron and Morgan have worked with him. Like, they have shared knowledge with them. They've worked with them. They're helping to groom them. In addition, you know, to, to Coach Carter, the whole group. So I think if he gets out there, he's going to be prepared and he's going to be ready. Uh, whatever, whatever that might be, they've got quality rushers in Denver. Um, they have their blitz schemes just like everybody else does. But I don't think it's going to be too big for him. I think he'll be just fine if he has to go out there and play. Are we talking enough about the Jets' interior offensive line? starting with Joe Tipman at the center position, Elijah Vera Tucker really coming on, and John Simpson has added a different element, I think, up front. Well, I mean, look, it, most offensive lines don't have two really good pulling guards. Most teams just have one. They've got two. They've got two guys that if you run one power, you want to run you know, traps, uh, triple traps, whatever you want to run, both those guys can pull and move. Uh, so that's good because I think – the more athletic you are on the offensive line, the more variables you can have, the more types of runs you can have. And so uh, Tipman is – you can see the relationship between him and Aaron. Aaron's got to have built-in trust with his center. Uh, so much is dependent on the snap. I mean, it could be just Aaron seeing 12 guys on the field, you know, like he did against Tennessee, and the ball's got to be quick snapped. And so I'm sure Aaron could give a dissertation – on the center position for 30 minutes a day, and it would never get old. Yeah, Just everything from a, snapping a wet ball to goal line snaps to shotgun snaps to where he wants the ball. Like that relationship, how he sees the blitz, how he sees where's the mic. Like that relationship is really, really important. And, and I think Joe's understanding that as time goes on. The Broncos, you mentioned Joseph before, they're going to mix it up coverage-wise at times, but – Predominantly, aren't they trying to rush with that four and then play the coverage in the back end? Yeah, I mean, look, they, they've got – they basically play a five-man front on first downs where they've got three really good – you know John Franklin Myers, yep. obviously, yep. along with D.J. Jones, along with Zach Allen. Those three guys are there to plug the middle. Alex Singleton never comes off the field as a middle linebacker. Uh, he makes a ton of tackles. He always has. When he was in Philadelphia, he made a ton of tackles. Um, but their outside linebackers, whether it's Cooper or Benito, like these guys are good rushers. You know, they got a kid that came in from the USFL last week, played his first game as a Bronco, got two sacks. So, you know, this, I, I think they're a good front. Like they, they really took it to Tampa. And Tampa – Seven sacks in all, just like the Jets last week. They got to Baker Mayfield. And Baker had played great until last week. And, you know, they couldn't get the ball to Mike Evans. Godwin the week before had a monster game like – the receivers didn't get the ball. Like, they shut down the run game completely. It was a very, very impressive defensive performance against Tampa in Tampa. Let's flip it to the other side of the ball. The Jets' defense right now, 14 sacks through three games. That's their best start in a season since 1966. We've seen them rush with four. We've seen a lot of change-ups. The Jets are throwing a lot more blitzes here early in the season. 
Well, I think that's what Jeff is going to do. I yeah. think Coach Ulbrich is, is going to – I think he's going to mix up the blitzes this year. I think losing Jermaine, you know, really hurts. So you got to, like, compensate a little bit. I mean, it's good to have a dominant edge rusher on the outside. Now, Will McDonald has certainly picked up the pace. Um, but, I, but I see contributions right now. You know, uh, Leonard Taylor is contributing. You know, Mike Clemens is playing more. Uh, you know, Javon Kinlaw looks to me – like he's playing the best football of his career. Mm. Like you, 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 this they've put a lot of resources into this defensive line. They've got to come up big, and so 14 sacks is a great number. But the more importantly, is affecting the quarterback. And I thought the last two weeks, Will Levis, Jacoby Brissett, they've really affected the quarterback the last two weeks, and it's made a big difference with their ability to score. Two reasons why I think the Jets are the clear favorite in this ball game. Number one is. You have a quarterback who just won his 150th game in a regular season, Aaron Rodgers, who's playing awfully well right now, against the quarterback on the other side in Bo Nix, who just won his first career game. He is yet to throw a touchdown pass in the National Football League. He has four interceptions, and the Broncos so far, six giveaways through three games. That's two a game. Yeah, I mean, I Sean Payton can't help but like look at Aaron Rodgers going, I had him in New Orleans yeah. <laughs> for 15 years. I had Drew Brees. I know what it's like to game plan with a guy that sees everything and a guy that can get you in a, you know, into a good play out of a bad play at the line of scrimmage and do all the checks and just an extension of his mind. Now, he's never really had to develop a quarterback before. Drew Brees was with the Chargers before he came to New Orleans. He'd played in the league. Like, he's never had to develop a quarterback like he has to develop in Bo Nix. And you saw a big jump with Bo Nix last week against Tampa. I mean, yeah, he played well. first two weeks, he really struggled to get the ball to his wide receivers. Cortland Sutton had caught four or five passes the first two games. Last week, he had more catches and more yards than he had in the first two games combined. So, I think Sean is, is careful here. Like, I don't think he's, he's not going to give him too much. He's going to try and slow play this thing. It's for the long term. Um, the, the team around him isn't great right now. I think they need more talent at certain positions. So, you know, I think Sean is not just looking at this week. He's looking at building a career for Bo Nix. And so I think he wants to limit some of the things. I mean, he's a good runner. Um, he ran last week, scored a touchdown last week. The touchdown passes will come. Yeah. Uh, one thing about Sean Payton, um, you mentioned the Jets' red zone defense. Yep. Like, I know Sean pretty good. He is maniacal about red zone offense. Like, he will spend hours in walkthroughs, film room, offseason, converting red zone possessions into touchdowns. Like, he's driven by it. He's going to find whatever flaw, weakness, anything he can find to expose it. So my first reason was the quarterback discrepancy where you got Rodgers and then you got Bo Nix. And Bo Nix is a talented young player, but he's just starting his NFL career. My second reason when I look at this game and say clear Jets advantage is up front. The Broncos offensive line, I think, are going to be really challenged against this Jets defensive line that we've been talking about. And also, Baldy, they haven't been able to run the football so far this season. No, and that's what they, they tried. Javante Williams, Jaleel McLaughlin, um, uh, Badi came in and had a, popped a big run the other day. But, like, look, Bo Nix has been their best runner. They, they have not been able to get a one-two punch. And they got a rookie out of Notre Dame that really hadn't uh, had much uh, play so far. But, you know, th that's what – I mean, Sean Payton always wants to get the running game going. He's going to formation you. He's going to – give you a lot of different looks. He's going to give you a lot of personnel groupings. But ultimately, he wants to get the running game going. And Javante Williams, look, coming out of North Carolina, I mean, that was a great contact runner. Contact balance. He still can break a lot of tackles. He had the ACL. I don't know that he's the same back right now. Yeah. But, you know, he's always been a guy that had contact balance. And this kid, Jaleel McLaughlin, is a guy that can – he he might not get you five yards of carry – but he can get you some splash plays in the screen game. The guy has unique quickness from the running back position. You mentioned Cortland Sutton before. And Sertan is a very good cornerback in his own right. The Jets have a very good cornerback. Well, they got a number of good cornerbacks. But when you're talking about Sertan, 
You think about those that prototypical big, lengthy corner on the outside, Sauce Gardner, the Jets can counter. Do you travel Gardner with Cortland Sutton this week? Because you know he is the clear number one target for the young quarterback. Well, I mean, Josh Reynolds leads him in receiving right now. Josh has played real well. Yep. He actually has more catches. Uh, nobody has a touchdown catch, as you mentioned. Uh, I, I wouldn't – if it didn't disrupt the defense – uh, so sometimes I think traveling with certain players disrupts the defense. Um, but Cortland is an outside receiver. He doesn't go in the slot. Uh, they've got other guys to do that. I wouldn't have any fear doing it and putting DJ or whoever on, on Josh Reynolds. Um, Marvin Mims really hasn't really popped yet. He's got just a couple catches. Uh, they're looking for a third receiver right now. So, I mean, I wouldn't have any problem putting sauce on Cortland because I think he knows – I, he's seen him two years in a row. He knows what he's like. He's not the fastest guy, but he's a big body. He's got good hands. So I wouldn't have any problem putting sauce on him right now. How much of an advantage is it having Rodgers overall? Because the Jets had the, those two turnovers that first game against San Francisco 49ers, the Brees fumble, and then the one where he tried to squeeze one in there to Garrett Wilson. But since then, they've been clean. And again, of Rodgers' most impressive stats, I would say 1.4 interception ratio has got to be right up there, the best in NFL history. Well, I mean, if you look at a number of his years in Green Bay, he went a number of years, I don't know how many exactly, but uh, where he threw less than 10 interceptions. Yeah. And he's throwing 500-plus passes. I mean, it's just – it's there's a reason why he's, you know, probably the highest-rated quarterback of all time, you know, because his interception – like, he doesn't make those type of mistakes. And so, but yet he's still aggressive. Like, there's some quarterbacks that doesn't throw a lot of interceptions. They just, but they're not aggressive either. Like, he's still looking to just rip your juggler right out of your neck every chance he gets. But he, because of his unique accuracy, um, you know, he just doesn't put the ball in harm's way. He needs 321 to get to 60,000. 60,000. Only nine players in the National Football League have reached that mark. Well, look, he's going to bring, he's going to set all kinds of records. He's not done yet. He doesn't have to do it this week. I'm sure if it happens in front of the crowd, I mean, I think it'll be a, a, a big moment for him. But I don't think he's thinking about it. I don't think he even knows he's 321 away. Um, I think he's if it takes 321 yards to beat the Broncos, then he's more than capable of doing that. But I think he. The, the number is going to fall. He's going to pass, whether it's this week or if it's in London, he's going to get it. So I think to him, he just wants to put another really good game together where he's seeing the whole field and he's, you know, making these throws, the two touchdown throws last week. They might have been just, you know, his own audible checks at the line of scrimmage to Lazard and Wilson. Like, I think he wants to still see the weakness and just prey on that weakness. You'll be calling the game up in the booth there on the radio on Sunday. When you see Rodgers make a throw like he did to Wilson, where he said that's a cardinal sin for a quarterback, I predetermined. I knew where I was going to go because Garrett came back and he wanted the ball. But it went down as a two-yard score on the, on the, box, on the box score. Yeah. But, I mean, that should be part of Rodgers' video at the end of the day, his highlight video of his career. Like, that's just an incredible throw. It's an incredible throw. The receiver feels good. They get the touchdown. They convert in the red zone. Uh, and then it, it lets everybody know that Aaron Rodgers is still elite. I mean, that's a long throw across the field. Guys make that throw. It, it go, sometimes it goes 99 the other way. You know, he could only put that ball in one spot, you know, for that to be caught by Garrett. And he put it in the only spot that could be caught. <laughs> Styles make fights. We all know that. Mm -hmm. Jets ran it wire to wire against the Patriots, the better team for 60 minutes. Give me a scenario where this could get tricky against the Broncos. Well, anytime you turn the ball over like they did against the 49ers, yep. it could get tricky. Anytime you're not converting on third downs, it could get tricky. The longer the Broncos keep it close, if they can, the more they feel like they can win it. The longer it stays close, a guy like Sean Payton is instilling confidence in his team, especially coming off the win on the road in Tampa. Like they're going to feel good about themselves, yeah. like they can compete. They can compete with the rookie quarterback. So, and then the quarterback doesn't know what he doesn't know. He's a rookie. All right. So he's having fun. He got his first win. Is on the road against a quality team and a team that blitzed him a lot. Uh, and, and, and he was able to handle 
the action and not make a lot of mistakes. So he's seen Pittsburgh. He's seen Tampa. He's seen two of the better blitzing teams in his whole business. So he's seen a lot already. Uh, but, you know, he's a kid that is going out there on the road, Jets, Jet Life Stadium, whatever. Like, he's just enjoying playing right now. And he would love nothing more than to get on a plane ride home with his team as the winning quarterback. You think this is a different dude? I've heard some comparisons to Will Levis because they're both athletes who can hurt you on the ground. They both can make a lot of throws. But you've liked what you've seen from him in a small sample size, Bo Nix? I do. Uh, you know, he, he won the job in preseason. They didn't give him the job. He won the job because he was really accurate. He was really accurate at Oregon. I mean, over 75% accuracy. Like, he can throw the ball to a tire. So, he struggled with accuracy the first two weeks. And maybe he was just rushing everything. It looked like he just was much more comfortable last week. He set his feet. That He just let the ball rip. And he looked much better. Um, I think, innately, he's an accurate guy. And so... That, I think he has over Will Levis. I don't, he's not built like Will Levis, which is fine. Um, but he's, he, he looked really comfortable last week. And so you never know when it's all going to kick in. He's got a great, great offensive mind and a great coach that can work with him every day. And so that's an advantage um, for Bo Nix. We're going to have you on the pregame show Sunday. We're looking forward to that. That's outside in the tailgate zone of pregame central. Um, what's it like for you? going to a game on a Sunday afternoon. Um, it, people feel like you're the guy next to them in a bar is talking, talking shop, talking ball to them. What, what, what's, it, what's it like going to a Sunday afternoon game there at Jet Life? This is my uh, 30th year of announcing games on Sunday. You know, I did them on TV at Fox for a long time. I do them on the national radio now. It, it still feels like game day to me, EA. Honestly, like I wake up, uh, you know, probably 6, 6.30, and I got my routine. I want to be at the stadium by 9.30. I want the booths all set up. I want to get, I'll do your pregame show. But I want to get out on the field and talk to the players, uh, talk to the coaches. I, I get a lot of information. Players generally are very relaxed game day. Uh, they tell you things that they might not say during the week. But I've, I've built these relationships with these guys. I mean, I know Patrick Sertan. We both live in Fort Lauderdale. And, you know, I see him around every once in a while. I, I've known Sean Payton for a long, long time. Um, done a lot with Sean over the years. You know, I just, it's just good seeing some familiar faces, game day. It, it adds to the energy of it, getting a chance. to. And then, you know, you, we prepare like we all do all week long, but then the ball's kicked off. And then, like, all the notes kind of go away. You pull them out if it's, if it's necessary, if it's uh, apropos. But honestly, you just get excited about announcing a game and feeling the energy of the crowd and, and watching all the, the things that go on during a game that sometimes you can't really always talk about if you're just doing TV. Place is going to be packed Sunday. It's going to be rocking. They were great on Thursday night against the Patriots. Yep. And you feel like there is a sense of anticipation, but also Jets fans are really embracing this team in 2024 because there's a lot of promise. It's not complete yet. As Rodgers reminds everybody, this is a journey. But really – promising early signs for this team? The fans have been so disappointed for so long. Um, last year was a huge disappointment. But, I, th but I, I don't think fans are just going, oh, I'm holding my breath. I think they just want to enjoy it. They just want to enjoy Sundays, you know, the tailgating, the game. They want to be into it. They want to help, you know, um, just be loud when they need to be loud. They want to be intimidating when it's that chance. It's been a long time, honestly, EA, since that jet crowd was – in there for four quarters to the end and being a part of the whole experience. This is a hell of an opportunity, Baldy, because you could go to three and one, but also three and oh in the AFC. Yeah. No, I mean all these division you know, all these conference games are important. You want to like you want to build a home, you know, a, really a, a home court. Yep. You know, all those things are important. You want to build trust with the fans, like this is not another jet season. This this can be special. This looks special. Like, that's what fans want. They want to feel like they're part of something special this year. Good stuff, brother. Always, yeah. See you on Sunday.